Hi everyone, it is August 21, 2019. Can't believe that we are heading closer and closer to the end of August, to the beginning of September 2019. What happened? Time sure is flying. Oh, that happens when you're having a good time. Are you having a good time? Okay. I read a comment recently uh, from, and it's a comment that I've received throughout the years, very familiar comment. Dane Wigington says geoengineering is the most important issue that everybody should be focused on. And I believe that when I heard Dane say that, when I was uh, still living in Great Barrington, what, 2011? And then I started thinking about that when I was doing research on these electromagnetic frequencies and the research showed me that they can actually mind control populations, individuals, or populations within regions, even whole countries. And I thought, well, okay, yeah, we're breathing in toxic chemicals and heavy metals that are making us sick and breathing in these toxins. We're dying from it and it's killing all life. Of course, that's the most important issue, right? But if we've got these electromagnetic frequencies that we are now saturated in that are keeping people well, pretty much, well, kind of like they're drinking, they're overdosing on fluoride, keeping them low, on a low level of consciousness. These frequencies, well, we know that they can mind control whole populations or individuals. So if we have a population that is mind controlled due to the electromagnetic frequencies, that seems to trump the poisons that we are breathing because if we can't get through to people due to the electromagnetic frequencies, then we can't get through to them on any issue. But you know what? Then I started thinking. I was walking down Main Street, Great Barrington, and all of a sudden, I felt like I was not seeing people. I was seeing issues, flinging about, bumping into one another. They weren't people, just their personal unresolved issues meeting up with the other personal unresolved issues. And, and I thought, my God, the personal issues, if they don't resolve those, then they can't get their brains to a higher consciousness. They won't be able to ever realize the difference between they thinking they care as opposed to the genuine care when you do that work and resolve those issues. Your thinking is held low. You're at a low level of consciousness, which is ego driven. It's that level of self centeredness that is a big factor in this nightmare that we live. So, if they don't work on their personal issues, we can't get through to them. And they certainly will never take any action to stop the tyranny that now has just exploded. So what is the most important issue? Unfortunately, they're all important, every one of them. So to those who have said, why am I focusing on anything else? Why am I not just focusing on geoengineering? Because everything's connected. And yes, if we cannot get through to people, if they have low IQs, if we have the younger generations who have been so indoctrinated 
and so inculcated in a very different culture than, well, my generation, baby boomers, and perhaps the next generation after the baby boomers, if they have been so mind-controlled, indoctrinated, calling for socialism, and calling for free speech to be eroded, well, when we don't have free speech, Dane Wigington and all of us will be silenced completely. We have a censorship going on now that we don't even know how deep it goes. You know, people can be posting on websites, people can be posting on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, in Instagram, and they're not told that their channels or their accounts have been terminated. They've just been, well, shadow banned. Nobody sees them. It's just another form of silent censorship. So if we can't get the information out, then we can't get the information out about the most important issue, geoengineering. The most important issue, electromagnetic frequencies that are very dangerous to mind, body, soul. We can't get the information out about, well, pregnant women drinking fluorinated water lowers the IQ of their child. We can't get anything out. So there's unfortunately now just a whole host of most important issues. Yeah, another study another study. How long have we known that fluoride lowers IQ? How long? So is there something wrong with Americans that no matter how much information they have, they never change their behavior? Right? I had a conversation with a, a neighbor. Okay, now both neighbors on either side of me have Wi-Fi. One neighbor had it when she moved in. That was about a year. Now the other one on the other side. I saw a Charter Spectrum come to her house last week. And we were both walking out of our apartments at the same time. And I said, so you now have Wi-Fi? And she said, yeah. I said, do you know how dangerous those frequencies are? And she said, yeah. Uh, okay, so she knows the frequencies are dangerous and she gets it put in her apartment. So, uh, she said she needed it to, <laughs> when she goes to the other side of, well, what amounts to a big closet? These apartments here, the studio apartments, they're little boxes. You need Wi-Fi to go to the other side of your apartment, which five feet, six feet, you know, due to the furniture on either side. I said, there are cords. You could get a cord. She said, oh, that's true. But the conversation, you know, went to she said something and I said, do you realize that the, this, this Wi-Fi is destroying people's lives? And she kind of chuckled and smiled and said, I'm not trying to kill you. And I didn't say anything about my uh, sensitivity. Yeah, you might not be uh, directly and purposefully trying to kill people, but when you have Wi-Fi and you know your neighbor, that Wi-Fi is coming through the walls into somebody else's apartment and you know these frequencies are dangerous, then you know, consciously or not, that you are affecting other people with dangerous frequencies and you don't care. There's no care. So what really is the most important problem that we have? The individual that needs to do the work 
to raise their consciousness, to resolve their issues that they fling about to get them to a place where they are no longer not caring about anybody but their own little life. That requires the individual to do an awful lot of work. I will not stop saying this. So for the, those of you who get upset when I do say it, too bad. Too bad. This is, this is the biggest factor that has led us right here living this Kafka-esque, well, Kafka on, on a bad acid trip. You know, that's what we're living. If people were healthy, if we had healthy individuals in every one of our uh, societies, in every, every you know, country in the world, healthy individuals create a healthy society. Unhealthy individuals in the aggregate create an unhealthy society. So, while geoengineering sure is important, while weather modification sure is important, GMOs sure is important. Look at Americans with the GMOs. I was arguing with people years and years and years ago. They, uh, well, how active were they? Uh, well, they would sign petitions. Petitions calling for the labeling of food. And I said, why are people not fighting to get rid of GMOs? Instead, you fight for years just to get your food labeled while they continue to take over the food supply. And that's where we are right now. Okay, so we've got a crazy population and a crazy population can't think straight and we're dying here. Every aspect of our life has been taken over. So, 12 minutes into the video, and I am going to be showing you what is going on. Free speech is dying, and Trump, wow, he's going to do a number on our free speech. When you have the younger, we're dying out. So for all of you who are younger, the baby boomers, the generation you know, after that, we're dying out and people are dying earlier. No, no, no. We are not a healthy country. People are dying at very young ages now. And those who believe that the population is increasing, you better do some research. Even the United Nations has come out and said that the world's population, there's a fertility crisis. Less are having children, more are dying, which means less people in the world. So, Listen to the younger generations. Listen to their mindset. This is very important. What is hate speech? And should the government ban it? We asked college students at the University of Southern California. If somebody uses a racial slur. That's hate speech? Yeah. I think that would be a reason to, like a crime. What if somebody says Muslims shouldn't be allowed into the U.S.? Yeah, that that's his speech. What if somebody denies the Holocaust? I, no, I don't have any understanding for that. You shouldn't be able to blatantly lie about something, especially like the Holocaust. A female comedian says men are scum. I don't believe that's hate speech. All white people are racist. No, um, I don't say no. I don't know. The First Amendment grants absolute protection of even the most vile speech, so long as it doesn't directly incite violence. I hate white people. 
all of them. Every last iota of a cracker, I hate it. But is the tide turning in America? 40% of Americans now believe the government should regulate so-called hate speech. But it turns out that defining hate speech is easier said than done. Everyone thinks this is hate speech, this is hate speech. Many who advocate hate speech laws in 2018 seem motivated by what they see as the rise of Trumpism. Build that wall. And hateful rhetoric on the right. And college campuses have become the epicenter of the free speech debate, with incidents of college students shouting down and even physically attacking controversial speakers becoming an increasingly common occurrence. So we talked to students at the University of Southern California about free speech and hate speech. One common refrain on campus is that hateful speech is actually equivalent to violence. Do you think hate speech by itself is an act of violence? Um, I do. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Your words can't like physically harm someone. I think violence is more than physical, it's emotional, psychological. If hate speech is violence, maybe it makes sense to regulate it like Canada, Australia, and most of Europe do. Many of the students we spoke to seemed open to the idea. I think if people could understand the power of words, then maybe hate speech is violence could um, help us have restrictions that are not damaging or that could stop at a certain place. Those kind of opinions are better said, left unsaid because it just incites violence and hatred among everyone, you know. Are you in favor of regulations that would stop people from doing that or that would make that a crime? Yeah. I would have no problem if it is regulated. But then who determines what constitutes hate speech? While most respondents to a recent poll agreed that hate speech is immoral, 82% said it would be difficult to ban because people can't agree on what is hateful. Could people form a consensus around whether these things are hate speech? Definitely not. I think it would be really hard to agree. And, and so does that give you pause and, you know, make you think like maybe maybe the regulation would not, be, not do what I would hope it would do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like obviously that would be ideal if something like that could be into place. I just don't really see how it would be. So for, I'll give you an example. So there, were, there was a French comedian and he was jailed for an anti-Semitic joke. Would you support that type of action? No. Advocates of hate speech laws often say that racists cloak themselves in the veil of free speech to attack vulnerable populations. Having free speech is a great right for everyone, but when the more powerful have it, I mean, it's going to obviously work to their advantage more than the less powerful. But social media provides examples of how speech codes often backfire and hurt the very minorities they are intended to protect. Facebook and Twitter are private companies free to ban whatever they deem to be hate speech, but their attempts to do so have resulted in bans of feminists saying that all white men are trash, and the platform suspended rapper Lil B for posting that white people are the only ones who really love their guns. You can tell they are violent people. Hateful speech might be hurtful, stupid, or just plain wrong, but if we deprive ourselves of the opportunity to hear it, we also lose the opportunity to rebut it, and the person who's willing to speak forbidden words gains a special power. When Austria imprisoned historian David Irving for Holocaust denial, he was greeted with a hero's welcome by a crowd of 10,000 in Budapest shortly after his release. The government had turned him into a martyr. In America, attempts to shut down or shout down speakers have almost certainly backfired as well by boosting the visibility of provocateurs like Milo Yiannopoulos. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Trump saying any of these things should definitely be regulated because he has so much influence in him saying these in speeches and stuff. But Trump saying things about minorities like Hispanics and women and uh, Muslims. Does it concern you that if the government is the one that's regulating these things, that people like Trump would be the one deciding what is protected speech and what is not? Yeah, of course, that's another concern. Granting and guess what? That's where we're heading. Trump regulating free speech, which I will show you in one moment. This is happening now. What this country has turned into, it's a foreign country as far as I'm concerned, but when you listen to these kids answering these questions, you realize that, ah, their definitions of hate speech are subjective. What they don't like is hate speech. What they feel is okay. Well, no, that's not hate speech. So all men are scum is not hate speech and well then someone saying something else is hate speech and it's so vague on its face that guess what all of us have already been monitored 
social media monitoring for hate speech. You now I posted, you want to talk about how unbelievably, I'd like to say the word ridiculous, but how unbelievably dangerous is the artificial intelligence that's out there pulling people off social media. The last video that I posted on Never Lose Truth, my primary channel, was a video, uh, what, the not the last video, but the last one that I got a community guideline strike for hate speech. I'm already in the data bank for the hate speakers. The hate speech in that video, I was talking about the very unwise, foolish, dangerous uh, mindset when people throw down comments about it's the Jews, it's all Jews. I was protecting a minority class and <laughs> I get a community guideline strike. Or maybe it was Christians that flagged me because I talk about the Christian hypocrisy. It's real. It's out there. Many Christians have emailed me saying thank you for bringing this up. But there's an awful lot of, well, I'm on a low level of consciousness. I'm not going to do the work that I need to do to raise my consciousness, to, to uh, do that work on my thinking so I become uh, more clear, precise, recognizing always the individual versus the collective, recognizing that it's not all of any one group. Um, all that work very important because if you don't do that work then you are part of the problem and your thinking is very uh, subjective. I don't like them, so it's all of them. If you don't recognize thinking objectively and subjectively is important, then you're still on, you've got a very low level of thinking. And this subjective analysis and everything and not looking at the objective, not analyzing it, you know, for the collective, for all of us, uh, will lead to greater and greater uh, loss of freedom, loss of individual rights. How are people not seeing the connection? Now, these, these kids in college today is, it's so frightening to listen to how they think, most of them, not all of them. There are, and I've spoken to parents um, who have these kids in school, and their, their daughter or son is really having a hard time because they don't go along with the majority. And the majority is that liberal voice of tyranny taking place, the PC voice. They don't go along with this hate speech crap or the triggering or the safe rooms or, you know, the, the stuffed animals that are given so that they feel more comfortable. Uh, so it's not everyone in every group. To so those who leave comments, talking about the millennials as if it's all of them, it's not. It is not. So please, please increase your awareness, increase your awareness of your thinking so that you can catch you know, these presumptions that you make, throwing everybody under the bus, anybody in one particular, you know, category or class or race, religion or whatever, so that you're not part of the problem.
and part of the solution. So what is happening? Here, UK cops warn mocking wanted criminals hair on Facebook. Mocking a wanted criminal's hair on Facebook could lead to arrest. Lead to arrest? Because it's offensive? Offensive? Okay. Uh, you know, we are far advanced, I think, in our poisoning Americans. The UK is more advanced in their arresting, their legislating, uh, what, well, legislating away freedom, Canada, legislating away freedom, hate speech, now you can get picked up. It's a criminal offense. But no one knows. Well, in Canada, it's if you don't call someone by their preferred pronoun, it's, it's illegal? R what? We're going there fast, and Trump is part of the going there. How is it that we got to a place where we talk about hate speech and nobody really knows what it is? So here's Mark Zuckerberg, who, congressional hearing, once again, but nothing comes of it because Facebook, Google, Twitter, they're all government companies. These are not private companies. Do not mistake Facebook and Google and YouTube and uh, Instagram and Twitter and all of these. They are government. They work hand in hand with government. That's why nothing ever gets resolved. And Congress can talk about you know, breaking up Google uh, all night long. It's not going to happen. Can you define hate speech? Senator, Senator, I think that this is, is a really hard question, question. And, and I think, I think it's, it's one of the reasons, reasons why we struggle with it. There, there are certain definitions that, 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 we, that we have around um, you know, calling for, for violence or... Um, let's, let's just agree on that. If somebody's yeah, calling for violence, we, that, that shouldn't be there. there. I'm worried about the psychological categories around speech. You used language of safety and protection earlier. We see this happen on college campuses all across the country. It's dangerous. 40% of Americans under age 35 tell pollsters they think the First Amendment is dangerous because you might use your freedom to say something that hurts somebody else's feelings. Guess what? There are some really passionately held views about the abortion issue on this panel today. Can you imagine a world uh, where you might decide that pro-lifers are prohibited from speaking about their abortion views on your content, on your platform? I certainly would not want that to be the case. But it, it, it might, might really, really be unsettling, unsettling to people who've had an abortion to have an open debate about that, wouldn't it? It, it might be, but I don't think that that would, would fit any of the definitions of, of, of what we have. And guess what? Pro-lifers have been uh, silenced, their accounts terminated. So he is lying. Now, do I think lying should be uh, legislated away, make it a criminal offense? <laughs> no. I'd love for people to stop lying, but uh, do I think that it needs to be legislated away? Well, that then denies people of their own free will and I can't go there as much as I one thing I hate lying hate hate it hate it I'm not a hater I don't hate people people leave you know, comments that I hate Trump I don't hate Trump he repulses me he disgusts me but hate is I've tried to imagine what that might feel like in terms of it you know, relating to another human being. I can't imagine it because it's so uh, the opposite of love. And we're talking genuine. I ain't talking the bullshit hate or love. I, I'm, yeah. So love, it's so incredibly powerful. I would think hate, genuine hate. 
is so incredibly powerful. You know, that it would, it would actually motivate someone to take another person's life based on the hate that they feel for someone. Well, it, it, fortunately, that has, you know, not been an issue for me. It is an issue for people, but is it an issue for an awful lot of people? No, no. Why are these terms so vague? Because they want to capture an awful lot of people. The hate speech is now sinking an awful lot of people. I will link below to everything so you can listen to, you know, the crap that Zuckerberg is saying. And it is, well, free speech. You know, it's like, it's very interesting. The baby boomers and the uh, generation after, we have a mindset that's very different from the younger generations. How did that happen so radically? Because it was socially engineered deliberately to happen. Common core, all these uh, uh, teachers, you know, teaching these kids you know, that they just have to pass a test. You know, they've obliterated, you know, encouraging children to become their selves, individuate, uh, you know, talking about that critical thinking. They don't talk about anything that's important. They don't teach anything that's important. It's all now geared towards they becoming slaves of the elite to be working for them. That's it. Colleges? Have you taken a look at what's happening with our university and colleges? It has been taken over by the liberal PC lunatics who have just created this lunacy hardwiring in the younger generation. Now, when you are getting the adults who are teaching you, encouraging some universities, mandating that you have to behave a certain way so that you don't hurt someone, that becomes hardwired. That's why you have a lot of these millennials and the younger generation or the generations after the millennials that do not think the way Americans used to think. They don't think in terms of constitution. They don't think in terms of individual rights. They don't think how important the free speech, you know, that First Amendment is. They think in terms of if you hurt an individual or you trigger an individual, then you have spoken hate. And it should be re re regulated because individuals should never be hurt. This is sick. This is such indoctrination, but we're living it now. Nothing is coming in the future. The shooter, the shooter in El Paso, Paso posted, posted a, a manifesto, manifesto online, online consumed, consumed by racist, racist hate. In, in one voice, our, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, bigotry and, and white supremacy. supremacy. Okay. White supremacy? This is a, uh, a, a fictitious narrative that has just developed. We, we're not a racist nation. Oh, we've got individuals who are racist. No doubt about it. But everything that you're hearing today about this white supremacy, white nationalists and racists and Nazis and all of that, if, if we have Americans who cannot think and who are so programmed to allow mainstream media reporters and people like this guy think for them, we're lost. 
That's why we've got a lot of important issues regarding lifting the Americans from the low road. That's the most important issue that we face. There is, this is all manufactured, deliberate manufacturing of a narrative. You now those of us who were, yeah, growing up, watching what was happening during the civil rights era, when white supremacy was actually real in this country? Have you noticed the difference? Have you noticed how far an awful lot of individuals have come in terms of you know, their mindset, which was a racist mindset? I live in South Carolina now. I see it every single day. Change has been radical. So this constant talk of white supremacy in our country, even from Trump, he's part of the whole staging of what is taking place. It's all about getting rid of our first, second amendments. But the first amendment, he's going to do it. He's going to get government regulation of social media. These, These sinister, sinister ideologies, ideologies must, must be, be defeated. defeated. Hate, Hate has, has no, no place in America. In America. Hatred, Hatred warps the mind, ravages, ravages the heart, and, and devours the soul. We have, we have asked, asked the FBI, FBI to identify, identify all further resources. They, they need to investigate and disrupt hate crimes, crimes and, and domestic terrorism, terrorism whatever they need. need. We, we must recognize that the internet has provided a dangerous avenue to radicalize disturbed minds and perform demented acts. All right, so we've got this guy, the president, talking about the internet. It's, this is why it was so important for Americans to see through all of these mass shootings, to understand that a lot of these mass shootings are orchestrated. They are orchestrated deliberately to bring us right here. They use crime to control the citizens in, in well, I'd say virtually every country, but we here and UK, Australia, they use crime to bring about a control that is tyrannical and the individuals lose their own freedoms, their own individual rights. But we don't have those Americans. We don't have enough that can get off that low level of thinking. And we have a lot who are quote unquote, you know, hip to what's going on, awake to what's going on. And they too are sitting back. In fact, I've been noticing, just reading comments, not just under my videos, um, and I've had subscribers email me. People are afraid to say certain words now. The chilling effect of even all of this talk, and when you have this local FBI field office warns of conspiracy theory driven domestic extremists. The FBI monitoring social media. Those conspiracy theorists, we're driving this and this guy, well, he's going along with it. The internet, the hate. We've got to get rid of these hateful ideologies. The internet is driving the violence. Right before that, the FBI. Okay. It brings us closer and closer to Trump writing an executive or order that will lead to government regulation of social media. Leaked documents show White House is planning executive order to censor the internet. Trump administration is drafting an executive order that, if upheld by the courts, could essentially end 
free speech on the internet. The draft order would put the FTC and the FCC, headed by its notorious, notoriously corrupt chairman, Ajit Pai, in charge of monitoring and policing online speech on social media platforms, online forums, and more. Government agencies, uh, unprecedented control over how internet platforms moderate speech by allowing them to revoke the essential protections Congress laid out in Section 2030 of the Communications Decency Act. Every mem, every social media post, every blog uh, and user-created video on the internet has been made possible by this crucial free speech protection, and we're losing it, and it's going to be under Trump. You know, if the government doesn't like the way a private company is moder moder moderating content, they can shut their entire website down. Here's another article, Public Knowledge, if you want more information about this. We are heading into very, very, very dangerous, dangerous times. Now, the red flag law will be signed into law by this guy. The confiscation of guns will continue to increase. Focusing on mental health, mental illness is what Trump wants to do. We don't, we don't want to see crazy, crazy people owning guns, guns but, but I also want to remember that, that mental illness is something, something nobody wants to talk, talk about. about. These, These people are mentally Ill, Ill and we have to study that also. Because, because you know, it's them, them. they pull the trigger, the gun doesn't pull the trigger, they pull the trigger. So we have to look very seriously at mental illness and we're doing that at a level that hasn't been done before. I support strong meaningful background, background checks, checks where people that should not have guns, guns people, people that are insane, people that are mentally ill, Ill people, people that are bad, bad, bad people, people like, like this guy in Philadelphia who's, who's been arrested, arrested numerous times. times. He's Everyone needs to take very seriously what Donald Trump tweeted recently, August 13. Chris Cuomo apparently said something I don't even know what he said it doesn't matter Trump responds would Chris Cuomo Cuomo be given a red flag for his recent rant filthy language and a total loss of control he shouldn't be allowed to have any weapons he's nuts really president of the United States tweeting an American should not have their Second Amendment right. That should be taken away from them based on what they said. Look, nothing, nothing that comes out of these people as impulsive as Trump is, nothing should be taken lightly. This is where this is going. Yes. You say something that someone doesn't like, you're mentally ill today. If you're mentally ill, then you get picked up and thrown into a psychiatric institution and your gun's taken away. How many people have a diagnosis of mental illness in our country? Was it a surprise or an accident, should I say, an accident that, wow, Mental illness in our country has skyrocketed. At the same time, the psychiatric medications, the doling out of those medications have skyrocketed. And now, lock up the mentally ill, they're deranged. But in one of uh, the videos that I was watching, what do you hear? It includes depression anxiety. Wow. Okay. Uh, law enforcement to flag and spy on future criminals. 33. Hey. Uh, this uh, comes from an Albuquerque Journal article, and I can't get that because I'm, I, I don't want to take off my ad blocker, but 
revealed, this article revealed that law enforcement will flag people that they think might pose a potential risk. Social media, okay? Uh, you write, let's say the word rage, enraged, angry. They may be monitoring you and you don't even know it. The police will be looking for certain indicators. So State Police Chief Tim Johnson said, I think it's obviously important for all of the citizens of New Mexico to be on the lookout for certain indicators. Oh, you're pulling in all of the citizens. Well, first of all, you're a citizen of the country. You're a resident of a state. Okay. But uh, all residents of New Mexico to be on the lookout for certain indicators of these types of folks that would do what? Well, do this. Yeah, do this. And part of our job as government officials is to ensure that the residents of the community understand what those indicators are so they can report them. Tampa Bay Times, not just happening in New Mexico, reports that police are looking for certain critical threat indicators on students' social media posts and have been, uh, and have even created their own Fortify Florida app that allows anyone to secretly report suspicious behavior. What these indicators are is anyone's guess. Ah, hate speech. Can't define it, but you just, yeah, you get sunk. Oh, I crossed the line. What did I do? Hey, I'm someone where my mindset says I have free speech in this country. Come on, what's going on? But you don't define anything. All the laws are very, very vague. So it captures. It's like a wide net that captures an awful lot of people. Uh, Johnson, this state police chief in Albuquerque, said that it was important for law enforcement and other social services to follow up on reports of possibly dangerous citizens, residents, in the hopes of preventing acts of domestic terrorism. All agencies involved, Trump, mental illness, law enforcement and other agencies are being encouraged to report on and flag anyone that they deem a potential risk. Do you know how uh, frightening this country is becoming? And then I'll get people who leave comments. Oh, you know, accept Jesus as your savior so that you won't have any fear. Look, when I use that word, or when I use any word, you know, that, uh, well, represents fear, I'm not afraid, but I know a lot of people who are. They're getting very afraid of what is taking place. When we need actually the opposite, we need people to get more angry and have more courage to fight this tyranny. We have more and more people leaving social media. We have more people watching their tongue. So do you really need to legislate away free speech? All you need to do is put out this information and it regulates the individuals. I can't say these things anymore because I'm going to be monitored. You may already be monitored and you just don't know it. Um, the uh, TAPS, the National Threat Assessment Program predicts if you pose a future threat. Law enforcement run mental health assessment program in Texas the police screening every person they have arrested for mental illness. You're arresting people for mental illness. TAPS Act, that will be federal legislation. Of this kind of legislation, 
that's going on in Florida, in New Mexico. And this will be signed. When you hear Trump talking about the deranged, the mentally ill, oh, he will sign the TAPS Act, which was first introduced in January, would take law enforcement screenings to a whole new level. It would create a national threat assessment of children and adults, everyone, everyone. And of course, they put it, you know, the, when they introduced the TAP, TAPS Act, you know, they have this ceremony going on. Oh, aren't we great, the TAPS Act. Uh, we do this first to honor the sacrifice of these men and women in blue who put their life on the line every single day to protect us and the vital role that law enforcement plays in the safety and well-being of our communities and our district. Do they care about how many in blue are killing innocent residents, well, citizens of the United States, residents, wherever it is that they're working? No. More people have been killed by cops than these mass shootings. Oh, but we don't care about that because they wear a uniform. They're not deranged, no. Yet we see very deranged behavior in uniform all the time. Now we're just going for the people who do the mass shootings, they're deranged. Trump is deranged. You know, when he can come out and say, red flag Cuomo, take his guns away, that is a deranged statement from the leader of the free world. All right, so yeah, it's uh, to protect our communities and schools from the terrible acts of violence that we have seen. These terrible acts of violence, many of them staged, many of them false flags to bring about an agenda like the TAPS Act. Are Americans really unable to see that our government, law enforcement, stage operations so that they can pass legislation that takes away their freedom, their rights, they still can't see it, we've got a problem with Americans. You know, TAPS would encourage law enforcement to give everyone a personal threat assessment, kids and adults, and single out those that they deem as future threats by bringing threat assessment experts together. Yeah, those experts, they really know their stuff, don't they? You know, <laughs> could you get off the expert thing, Americans? Um, so experts together and utilizing evidence-based behavioral threat assessment and management processes. Do you understand that the mental health field is filled with deranged people? Psychiatry, these psychiatric disorders, the DSM, Diagnostic St Statistical Man uh, Manual, the Bible of Psychiatry and Mental Health, and it's used in other nations, and it's so frightening, because mental illness is voted on. Voted. They vote on it. They vote on it. And then they diagnose somebody with men mental illness. They give them psychiatric medications that lead to other behaviors that they wouldn't ordinarily, um, you know, choose to, you know, behave as such, no, these psychiatric medications create in that individual behaviors that then they're diagnosed with other psychiatric disorders, put on more medication. Great field, isn't it? Experts. Experts. They vote on. They vote. There are no diagnostic tests. It is a subjective analysis of an individual's behavior. See, we have so many problems in this country, but one of our main problem problems is our, uh, the majority of Americans just do not know how to think. 
They do not know how to think. And, well, so much of the problems that we face are actually connected to the paycheck that so many Americans receive at the end of the week or two weeks. So they won't, won't think. They won't think because everything's about them. Oh, they say they care, but everything is about them. Paranoid police state that considers everyone a potential threat. So the TAPS Act will create a Joint Behavioral Threat Assessment and Management Task Force to identify individuals that exhibit patterns of dangerous behavior that may precede an act of targeted violence. Well, your, your act, your behavior, it could be as simple as, well, writing the word rage on social media, uh, giving your opinion, you know, speaking or writing your opinion on social media that you are pro Second Amendment. I'm not kidding. This is no joke. And so many will be affected by this and you won't hear about it unless someone knows and posts a video on YouTube and word gets out. People will be picked up as they are already picked up by law enforcement, thrown into psychiatric institutions. What does that remind you of? Perhaps mm, the gulags? the Soviets, you know, the tyranny, oh, those communist nations that threw dissidents into psychiatric institutions or killed them. This is where, what we are living now. We are living it now. It's only going to increase. Trump will create an increase via executive order. We have kings who are signing executive orders. Americans can't even get that their own federal government is no longer. It doesn't operate the way they love to think it does. Congress, you know, the, the, the violation of the con Constitution was ongoing during the eight years of Obama. And I posted so many videos on how, how is it that Congress is allowing one branch to usurp their power. They're just, go ahead, take it. Because we do not have a government the way Americans think we do. First of all, it's a corporation. Trump is the CEO. Everything is just, it's put out there as an illusion to maintain the delusion in the collective mindset of the majority of Americans. We're so far gone now, I do not believe that there is a coming back. You know, oh, Carol, you're so hopeless. No, I'm a realist. I'm a realist, and everything has gotten worse, and nothing has gotten better under Trump. Every time a police officer responds to a 911 call or makes a traffic stop that, you know, is it could be potentially explosive. So they have a criminal threat score for all of us, all of us. Big data software solution from Intrato Incorporated enables law enforcement to view a threat score for any individual. The score is calculated using social media data, license information, address data, previous calls to the address, other data services, collecting all information on every individual, and you come out with a criminal threat score. Are you able to know what that score is? No. No. So, individuals have a red, yellow, or green threat level, 
uh, based on the Beware database and its calculations. Civilians have no access to their threat score, cannot address any inaccuracies uh, that might impact their score. Critics of this software uh, yeah, demonstrate that a word as simple as rage on someone's social media account will raise their threat score. If an individual's social media account is hacked or compromised, it could impact their threat score without their knowledge and provide erroneous information to law enforcement. Calls are staffed. Calls are staffed according to that threat score so that officers don't find themselves entering a dangerous situa situation without the appropriate equipment and backup. Think. Think. Okay. You see a cop stop someone on, on the street. Traffic violation. All of a sudden you see two, three, four cop cars showing up immediately. Why? Did that individual have that threat score where they needed backup? Could that individual be completely innocent, nonviolent, no problem whatsoever? Uh, but you know what they do with this? They also collect all the information on the individual's associates, friends, family, and what those friends, family, associates are writing about them. We have, the, the American people are pretty much a violent people. You know, they take revenge. We've got a lot of those personal issues that the Americans just fling about. So if someone is filled with wanting to get revenge on someone, can they post something on social media about them that's not true? Absolutely. Can they call the authorities to say, hey, I think something's wrong with this, uh, this friend of mine because they've been talking about killing people when it's not true at all and the authority shows up at your door, they take your guns, they throw you in a psychiatric institution. Voila. What is the most important problem? that we face. Americans who are not well, who desperately needs to do the work necessary to get themselves well so that they can be principled individuals living, living a moral life where they're not lying, manipulating, gaslighting, hurting other people because they have an awful lot of these unresolved issues that they never do any work on. They can show up to work and get a paycheck and pay their bills. That's it. That allows them to think they're good, decent people. But then they go out into the world and cause an awful lot of problems for an awful lot of people Yeah, we've got a problem with Americans. We would never have gotten to live what we are living right now without Americans being the well-adjusted to a deeply disturbed society, which means they are deeply disturbed themselves. And unless they come out of that disturbance, all of us, all of us have to suffer the consequences of their mental illness. The fact that we've got a president like this means something's wrong with the American people. Reality TV, uh, you know, the lies are incredible about this guy's life, going bankrupt so many times and 
yes, he's uh, been bailed out, the Rothschilds, George Soros, and nobody wants to know the truth. Nobody wants to know the truth. They just love hearing, you know, that hypnotic, the hypnotic slogans. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Build that wall. Build that wall. Make America great again. Yay. We're all going down. Unless Americans snap out of their own low level of consciousness and begin to think about what's happening. Parents, this is what you're leaving your kids. Older generation people, this is what we're leaving. The younger generation, start caring about others, others beyond yourself. <laughs>